Any modification to the recommended roofing system design should only be done after consulting with your local building official or a building envelope specialist. In some areas, building envelope specialists are regulated by government. Please check with local building officials to see if there are professional requirements in your area. You don't have to go to the ends of the earth to find the world's best roofing material. You can find it right here on the Pacific coast of North America, western red cedar and yellow cedar. Resistant to weather, insects, and deterioration, cedar's beauty and insulating value have made it a favorite of master builders for hundreds of years. True craftsmanship, master quality if you will, is available today through members of the Cedar Shake and Shingle Bureau. For over 100 years, Cedar Bureau Trade Association members have guaranteed the best that nature has to offer. Bound together by rigid quality codes, Cedar Bureau members agreed to strict standards of inspection, grading, and application. All member manufacturers undergo random, unannounced third-party inspections. Members also undergo inspections performed by the in-house Cedar Quality Auditor providing a unique additional layer of quality control not found elsewhere. There are three main product types. Serta split hand split and resawn shakes. Split on one side, sawn on the back, used for a more rustic look. Serta sawn taper sawn shakes, sawn on both sides, giving a tailored appearance with a heavier shadow line than a shingle. Serta grade shingles, sawn on both sides, used for a tailored appearance. The top grade for shakes is called premium grade, which means 100% vertical grain. The top grade for shingles is called number one grade, and also means 100% vertical grain. Other more economical grades are available, depending upon project needs. Lower grade products will contain more flat grain. Don't be fooled by people boasting they have a product with a blue color label, and that's all you need to know. Blue label is actually a registered trademark of the Cedar Bureau. The CERTA label assures the consumer that the shake or shingle has been legally inspected to conform to CSA and UBC regulations and ICC codes. Proper building code compliant labels show the inspection agency logo, association membership, product dimensions and grade, manufacturer's contact information, and building code standards the product meets. For those looking for fire retardant treated products, CertiGuard materials are available in Class B or C pressure impregnated treatments, and Class A systems are available. To provide even longer life to your cedar roof, consider a CertiLast pressure impregnated preservative treated product. As we show you the basics of roofing with cedar shakes and shingles, we'll refer to the Cedar Bureau's new roof construction manual and we'll tell you where to send for your own copy at the end of this film. A well-installed roof starts with proper installation. Shakes and shingles may be applied over spaced sheathing. Spaced sheathing is usually 1x4 or 1x6 softwood boards and shall not be less than 1x4 boards. At the eaves, the sheathing should be solid, usually extending 36 inches in from the edge. Solid sheathing is recommended for shakes and may be required in seismic regions or under treated shakes and shingles. Solid sheathing is used in areas with wind-driven snow. Details for installation over solid sheathing in high humidity areas can be found in the CSSB New Roof Construction Manual. Please note that the only solid sheet sheathing tested with CERTA label shakes and shingles is plywood. Check with your local building official for plywood thickness dimensions. Eave protection is used on the edge where 36 inch felt underlay is used and should extend up at least 24 inches beyond the exterior wall, but it is not meant to cover the entire roof. Check with local building code officials for any local climate-related requirements. Covering the entire roof deck with a non-permeable barrier creates additional ventilation hazards and can trap unwanted moisture. Cedar Bureau field staff have observed numerous incidents of roof integrity issues when certain label shakes or shingles are installed over non-permeable barriers, including ice dam barrier underlayment, without incorporating a robust ventilation system. The manufacturer's lifetime limited warranty administered by the CSSB on behalf of its manufacturing members does not currently allow a non-permeable barrier across the entire roof deck, 
except in low-slope installations, as discussed in the CSSB New Roof Construction Manual. Contact individual manufacturing members to see if they offer a different in-house limited warranty. For installation variations, including modification to the vapor barrier system, check with your local building code official and building envelope specialist. In addition, you must consult with the continuous ventilation product manufacturer for its own approved systems, installation instructions, and product performance warranty. Additionally, check with your local building code official for approval of the continuous ventilation product manufacturer's systems. Shingles are never interlaid with felt. Shakes should be interlaid with felt. The Cedar Bureau recommends using an 18-inch wide strip of number 30 ASTM D226 Type 2 or number 30 ASTM D4869 Type 4 roofing felt laid over the top portion of shakes and extending onto the sheathing. The felt should be applied over the top portion of the shakes and extend onto the spaced sheathing so that the bottom edge of the felt is positioned at a distance above the butt equal to twice the weather exposure. Special care should be taken when installing the felt interlays over the spaced sheathing to ensure that a watertight baffle is formed. Never allow felt to be exposed to the weather, as this will cause premature degradation of the felt layer used in the roofing system. The importance of good attic ventilation beneath the roof cannot be overemphasized. Such movement of air will prevent or inhibit condensation of moisture on the undersurface of certain label shakes or shingles, or on the roof decks. Consult a building envelope specialist and your local building code official for attic ventilation system requirements. Vents should be provided at the soffits, eaves, as well as at the gable ends, screened to prevent ingress of insects. On roof by using attic roof ventilation, or preferably the ridge lines with cross ventilation desirable. A rule of thumb for adequate ventilation is that the ratio of total net free ventilation area to the area of the attic should not be less than 1 to 150, with compensation made for screens over vent apertures. In the case of a balanced system, a 1 square foot per 300 square feet of floor area may be adequate ventilation. Check with your local building department. Attic fans may be beneficial by supplying additional movement of air in attic spaces. When loading materials onto the roof, use a forklift, scissors truck, or a conveyor belt and place the materials out of the way spread along the ridge line in order to distribute the weight. On re-roofing jobs, distribute all of the material onto the roof at the beginning of the job to allow the house time to adjust to the weight. Before any shakes or shingles are installed, take care of the valley flashings. Valley flashings should be underlaid with number 30 roofing felt conforming to ASTM D226 Type 2 or number 30 ASTM D4869 Type 4. A non-permeable membrane can be substituted for felt in areas prone to ice dams. Use galvanized steel or aluminum W valley flashing painted on both sides. When CertiGuard or CertiLast products are specified, contact the treatment company for their specification on flashing material. Crimp the center and edge, then paint it on both sides. Use a minimum number of nails installed at the outer edge of the valley. Check with your local building official for minimum gauge or thickness requirements. Valley metals that have proved reliable in a particular geographic region should be selected. If considering copper flashing, check with the local building official on the durability of copper flashing in your area. Flashing should be pre-painted both sides using a good metal or bituminous paint. Flashing strips, which must be bent to sharp angles, should be painted after bending. Metal flashing with baked on enamel coating is available in some areas. Different flashing metals are available in different areas, depending on climatic variations. It is good practice to use metals that have proven their reliability under the specific conditions to be encountered. It is important that metal flashing have the same longevity as Western Red Cedar. As with any roofing material, start your installation at the eaves. The first course should extend one and a half inches beyond the edge of the fascia to allow adequate drainage into the gutters. The first course should also be double or triple layered. Each certain label shake or shingle should be applied with two fasteners. Nails must be stainless steel type 316 
in locations within 15 miles of saltwater. For locations outside the saltwater zone, nails must be stainless steel type 304, type 316, or hot dip galvanized with a coating weight of 2 ASTM A153 Class D, 1 ounce per foot. Stainless steel nails offer the highest degree of corrosion resistance. Some nail manufacturers offer nails specifically for wood shake or shingle roof application. Contact the nail manufacturer for further information to ensure the fasteners used comply with the listed requirements and are correct for your application. Fasteners used with fire retardant treated, Certigard, and preservative treated, Certilast, shakes or shingles must be stainless steel type 316. For specifics on installation, accessory building materials, flashing, etc., finishes and maintenance, please contact the treatment company directly. As to the length, follow the chart in the Cedar Bureau's new roof construction manual. To save time, learn the art of speed nailing. We'll show it again due to its popularity. It's important to determine how much of each shake or shingle to leave exposed to the weather. Use the exposure chart in the new roof construction manual and determine this before you buy your material. Weather exposure obviously affects how much material is needed. When it comes to keeping the edge of the courses even, shingles are less forgiving than shakes because of their smoother, cut edges. With shingles, be exacting by using a hand gauge, chalk line, straight edge, or a combination of the three. Adjust the courses slightly to avoid any short courses as you make your way to the ridge line. Leave one quarter inch to three eighths of an inch between each shingle. For shakes, the spacing between is three eighths of an inch to five eighths of an inch. Always offset the joints of adjacent courses by a minimum of an inch and a half. Yellow cedar shake and shingle products will require greater spacing due to higher percentage of dimensional change in the species. Check with your contractor and local building code official. Treat knots and other defects as a joint, offsetting the defect one and a half inches from the edges on the adjacent course. When applying shingles, it is also important that joints and alternate courses do not align. With shakes, felt interlayment is essential. It acts as a baffle, closing the gaps in the thicker, roughly hewn shakes. It also forces the water towards the surface of the roof so it can drain. Pre-felting the shake roof is fast and economical, saving up to a third of installation time. It also helps as a guide for weather exposures. And to valleys, felt courses can be cut off well into the valley. Or you can run a felt bleeder at a distance from the center of the valley. This bleeder also makes a handy guide for cutting the valley shakes, something we'll cover a little later. The felt should extend no lower than twice the weather exposure. So if the weather exposure is 10 inches, place the felt 20 inches above the butt line of the course it covers. For the first course, that 20 inches should include the fascia overhang of an inch and a half. The bottom edge of the next strip will be 10 inches from the bottom of the previous strip. The top of the felt should be attached to the sheathing. That way, when the shakes are nailed, the nails also penetrate the felt. Don't forget to felt details such as hips and ridges. As a design detail, the first course of shakes can be tripled. For effect, Try using a thinner product sandwiched between layers of thicker shakes. Shakes with their rough hewn edges are a little more forgiving than shingles when it comes to keeping courses even. With shakes, use the edge of the felt as your guide. The toughest part is adjusting the weather exposure so that all the courses are even all the way to the ridge line. The most important detail when applying shakes is positioning them relative to the felt. No more than four inches of a 24 inch shake or three inches of an 18 inch shake should be covered with felt. Otherwise, in humid areas, you could limit the life of the roof. Remember, never interlay shingles with felt. Offset the joints on adjacent courses by one and a half inches. Shakes are a natural product and you'll find nominal measurement variations in length, thickness, and width. Use shorter or feather tip shakes on the hips or ridge lines. Wide shakes are useful in the valleys. Completing a valley is the same, whether using shingles or shakes. Stop the course about three units away from the valley, then pre-cut the piece that will go to the valley at an angle so that the grain of the shake or shingle is not parallel to the valley center line. To determine this angle, line up the butt of the shake or shingle with the bottom of the course by marking a line. Cut the piece, 
but don't throw away the triangular scrap. We'll use it to complete the edges of the hips. Install the unit closest to the valley, then complete the course by filling in the blanks with shakes or shingles of the right width. Make certain that no joints break into the valley. Flashings, vents, chimneys, and skylights aren't difficult if you think of them as just another shake or shingle. Install flashings as if they're another roof surface, forcing the water to the surface so it can run off. We'll look at two different types of flashings, those around vents and those for wall junctures, chimneys, and skylights. Use galvanized steel, aluminum, or plastic. Check with your local building official for minimum gauge or thickness requirements. Valley metals that have proved reliable in a particular geographic region should be selected. If considering copper flashing, check with the local building official on the durability of copper flashing in your area. Place the flashing, then at its upper side, insert a small piece of felt. Top that piece of felt with a unit of undercoursing. Roof around the vent, treating it as if it's a shake or shingle. Leave a one inch clearance around the projection and make sure you don't pierce any part of the vent flashing with a nail. Start the next course by placing one wide piece over the undercoursing at the top of the vent. The butt of this piece may be off course, but that's okay, you're done. Make sure to leave the lower part of the flashing uncovered to allow drainage. Chimneys, wall junctures, and skylights are all flashed essentially the same. Used galvanized steel primed with metal paint. There are three main parts to this type of flashing. An apron, step flashing, and a cricket. First, complete the final course next to the lowest point of the vertical wall. Apply apron flashing over the upper edges of this course and up the wall or chimney. Cut the apron so that it wraps around the edges. Step flashing is then applied one shingle at a time, one flashing per course, working toward the ridge line. At the top or back of the chimney or skylight, cricket flashing is installed. The cricket flashing allows water to drain quickly around the sides of the skylight or chimney. Be sure to leave plenty of room for water to flow freely, clear of leaves or debris. Before installing hip or ridge caps, you must first complete the courses forming the hip or ridge edge. To create an overvented ridge line, leave a gap in this edge about one inch wide. This allows for proper ventilation. Before installing ridge caps, Cover this one inch gap with a specially made ventilation strip. Tack it down and then felt over the gap. For finishing hip edges, use the triangular cuts left from the valley cuts. The pieces are all ready to go. Once the edges are complete, you're ready to install the caps. Ridge and hip caps can be made at the job site, but it's easier to use caps that are pre-made. At the hips, start by marking a guideline to keep the caps even. Using a cap as a measure, snap a chalk line the length of a hip. Next, felt over the top of the hip edges, but don't cover up your chalk guideline. Start the caps at the eave line. Notch the first cap, then double the starter course at the eave line, just as you did for the roofing courses. For ridges, also double the starter course. Begin application of the ridge caps at either end, then work toward the middle. If there is no chimney, Create a small saddle in the center where the course meets. By the way, ridges are a good place to add decorative touches. For both ridges and hips, overlap the beveled edges, alternating the direction of the overlap between courses. Keep the weather exposure consistent with the rest of the roof and conceal the nails about two inches above the butt of the next course. Note that you'll need longer nails to penetrate at least a half an inch into or completely through the sheathing. Make sure you follow fastener guidelines provided earlier in this short film. Timeless beauty. That's what Cedar Bureau members produce for roofs installed across the globe. True craftsmanship, honed with years of experience, goes into each shake and shingle. With proper installation and care, quality cedar roofs will last for decades. Have a professional keep your roof clear of any debris and moss. Serta Label products have been rigorously tested for wind, impact, and fire resistance, making it the right choice to protect your home from the weather. Members' products are environmentally friendly, manufactured from a renewable, recyclable, and biodegradable resource, never one that has to be mined or pumped from the ground. Sustainable harvesting methods are used, 
and the industry utilizes salvage logs, fiber that would otherwise be left on the forest floor. Due to cedar's natural decay resistance, this wood is in pristine condition for the shake and shingle manufacturer. A member manufacturer's lifetime limited warranty is available on roofs installed by a Cedar Bureau member contractor installer. Manufacturers stand responsible for their products against manufacturing defects. Our popular website offers you a wealth of free information about our members' products and services. The Cedar Shake and Shingle Bureau is glad to help you with any questions you might have. You can email, call, or fax us with your request and we'll get back to you promptly. We're located in the heart of Cedar Country and our label is a guarantee that your cedar roof will be the crowning touch of quality. Any modification to the recommended roofing system design should only be done after consulting with your local official or a building envelope specialist. In some areas, building envelope specialists are regulated by government. Please check with local building officials to see if there are professional requirements in your area.